Your rich leaders grow richer while you die in the swamp, Di. Imperialists make you fight this war, Di. They do not care about you. You have lost this war, Di. Your army will leave you behind. Your government lies to you every day, poor soldier. They will give you a medal, Di. But only after you are dead, defect, Di. It is a very good idea to leave a sinking ship. Your pilots do not care that you are down here, GI. You cannot dig foxhole to high in, GI Joe. Your bombers will fire you, GI. Your helicopters fall from the sky like broken birds. The skies are dangerous, GI. They will napalm you tonight. Hi, my name is Momo. <laughs> Hey, guess what, guys? Guess what episode it is of Radio Free Ensmith? It's episode 69! Do you think that's funny? And in honor of that, we are going to be covering something loosely connected to... That's my drum roll. To Peste Noir! We... He's in, boys! He did it! He said it! Specifically, we're going to be talking about bands influenced by Peste Noir, or rather the uh, dearth thereof. You got Diapsequir, 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 I don't know, they did a split with Peste Noir, it was called Ras de Vies versus Ras de Champs, Rats of the City versus Rats of the Fields, and they kind of do like the weird Peste Noir genre mashy thing, I don't know how much of an influence they actually were, you know, Peste Noir onto these uh, guys with the band name that starts with a D that I can't fucking pronounce, because... They've both been around for a long time, and I think that's more a case of convergent evolution, so that's out. We have, uh, Molot, or, uh, M8L8TH, those, uh, those Ukrainian fellas, they show up in a lot of Peste Noir music videos, and as of late, they have been doing some more Peste Noir-influenced stuff, but, like their earlier stuff, it's lame, and I don't really care about it. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, but, uh, you know, they got good aesthetics. They have an interesting concept behind the band, but the music doesn't do much for me, and it never has. And, you know, I hate to say that because I know they're friends with Peste Noir, but, uh, yeah, sorry, not a Molot fan. But we do have one band that has come out with some very good stuff that is clearly obviously influenced by Peste Noir, and that is, uh, Catacombs. Catacombsy, they got a little E at the end right before the S. Catacombs. They're also from France. But to uh, properly understand their music, we need to trace the lineage of French black metal that gave rise to both them and Peste Noir. So originally, French black metal starts out with uh, Le Légion Noir, or at least the uh, particular strain of French black metal that we'll be talking about here. It started out with the Black Legions who were a bunch of bands. You had Vlad Tepes, who were awesome, Belketre, who were um, interesting, Torgeist, who were boring and stupid, and then finally Mutilation, who were probably the best out of all of them. They kind of had two styles to their music, these Mutilation guys. One was very fast, blasty, medieval-sounding stuff. So you have these... Uh, Bittersweet melodic riffs with crazy vocals and fast blasty drumming. Pretty standard stuff for French black metal. But when this album came out, this is off their second one, but it was recorded in uh, like 93, 94. That was pretty fucking revolutionary. So the fast blasty stuff. But then we also have, perhaps even more influential, their mid-paced riffs. Talking about stuff like this. where they're uh, picking out individual notes from the chords, moving them up and down the neck, and having sort of like a jangly feel to it. Very influential on all of black metal. Not just the French stuff, like Zaster pulled a lot from this, and it's an innovation on a Burzum technique, just taking it over. But Mutilation, 
kind of the masters of this sort of riff, and it heavily influenced latter day stuff like uh, Peste Noir. <laughs> So you can see Peste Noir have taken those very dark, depressing mutilation riffs and morphed them into something a bit more uplifting and volkish. So that was one of the major early Peste Noir innovations. This is from their first album, so it's not as strange as their later stuff, but it's still very innovative, as the British would say. And I think this sort of change actually ties in very well with an interesting article in the Daily Star, the latest uh, installment of the Self Help Sundays from Mr. Anglin, or Monsieur Anglin. I can't even keep up with my own bits, guys, where he's talking about how you have to be careful about what sort of uh, media your soul is consuming, and it's important to try and keep things somewhat uplifting. Now, I think that the best of black metal is uplifting in a very Faustian, Zarathustrian sense. But, uh, to be fair, Mutilation, that guy had a really big uh, drug problem, and it didn't really affect those first two albums too much, but later on he essentially disintegrated as a person. Whereas uh, Peste Noir took the music of Mutilation and then brought it into a more uplifting direction with a bit more uh, philosophy behind it in terms of the nationalist stuff, the medievalism. What does he say? He is like an anarcho-monarchist? That's an interesting way of looking at stuff. And, you know, look at Famine now. He's in shape. He's a big muscular dude. He's got a hot GF. So there's something to be said for that. Also, that article clearly defends K-pop. So, uh, get wrecked, faggots. Anyways, that was the mid-paced Peste Noir stuff. They also innovated heavily on the uh, fast blasting stuff. Bonjour. Oh, bonjour. So they've taken those faster mutilation styled riffs, but they play them with a lot more technical ability in their guitar playing. And this unlocks new doors and how the uh, melodies unfold. Also the production's a lot better, you probably noticed that. But still very raw in black metal. Classic Burzum drum beat with that uh, snare accent of the third beat of the measure, you know how it is. So yeah, you take those two ideas from Mutilation, you develop them through uh, Peste Noir, whose poster just fell off the wall. I think he heard me talking about them. Go minasai, famine son. Hi. But uh, yeah, Peste Noir. Catacombs. That's where we're getting with this. Catacombs. So they take those two basic ideas developed by Mutilation and later Peste Noir and bring them into even more interesting new directions, which is why they are one of the best black metal bands active in the scene today, despite the fact that they've only put out an album and an EP. That's it. So here is how they change it up with the fast blasty stuff. So obviously that was pretty fucking dang good too. For real, this is good stuff. We have these storming, melodic, medieval style francophone riffs. With some very high quality drums. This is all one guy, by the way. Very impressive. I like his vocals a lot too. They remind me of uh, early Lucy Fugit from Ukraina. Everybody should know Lucy Fugit, for fuck's sakes. Expertly done riff change. Utilization of higher notes towards the end of the musical phrase adds a sense of uh, beauty and decayed grandeur to the music, which fits with the overall theme of the band. They aren't as explicitly nationalist as uh, Peste Noir. Rather, they portray the effects of modern decadence on society through their music through the lens of sort of like this kind of Victorian era type stuff very Jack the Ripper and then also the uh, Faustian 
desire to burn through all of that and overcome it. Their mid-paced riffs are similarly interesting. So this is where the Peste Noir influence really comes out. But they also do that interesting string bend type shit at the end of it that I like quite a bit. The utilization of uh, fully strummed chords at the end of the uh, single string pick musical phrases is a nice touch. Like that. Some very good songwriting. They don't want to dip into minimalism and let the riff kind of disintegrate on itself. Where they've uh, removed the standard melody and then just stick with the chords. But then they bring that melody back in a very Faustian resurrection. This time with blast beats under it and tremolo picked. I think this album came out like 2015. It's called Le Demoniac, and it's uh, it's very good. Go and get it. But last year, they put out an album that was in the running for uh, album of the year. Or rather, it was an EP. It only had four songs, and they did some really cool stuff with it. For instance, they started incorporating a bit more uh, thrash and punk. Punk drum beat, yeah! Gotta have that. Oh my god, what is this, a fucking DRI song? This is awesome. So we're using this uh, punk rhythm section as a furnishing on which to hang our tremolo picked black metal medieval style riffs. Very interesting stuff. I always enjoy that sort of thing. Infamous from Italy are also very good at it. We also have newly updated, more complex versions of those uh, fast blasty sections. That thing where they're uh, hitting the open string in the midst of their melody is very French. That was started by mutilation, of course. But it's taken to new heights here. Combine that with the uh, folkiness of Peste Noir, and you have the recipe for catacombs. Very good stuff. And then they uh, change up the percussion along with the riff to give the music a sense of being an epic journey. So very well done. The most interesting track in the EP goes into completely new territory, utilizing a bit more of a droning style and incorporating folkish instruments. Check out these uh, dank accordion and violin drones. Gotta love that. Actually, the synth violin reminds me a bit of uh, Granville Isles Key from America. There we go. We have these hanging chords, highly unusual done very well. I also like the uh, separation between the bass and the guitar. The uh, bass takes a much more prominent role on this album. I'm just soaking in the atmosphere. Very good rainy day album. Which is what inspired this week because I was listening to this while it was raining. There we go. So utilizing that dronier style of riff with their um, trademark tremolo picked medieval melodic type stuff. So somehow Catacombs with an E between the B and the S at the end is still up on Bandcamp. Uh, and if I haven't found these guys yet. So you can get all of their stuff. Go out and buy it. You can do the thing where you buy the CD and get the MP3s for free. Why wouldn't you? It's all very good stuff. Until next week. Amazing. That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. 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 Amazing.
ご視聴ありがとうございましたこの動画が良かったらグッドボタンとチャンネル登録ぜひぜひお願いします